Welcome to COPA. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to create a listing on COPA. To start, make sure you're signed in on your hosting account with COPA. If you're not sure how to create an account as a host, feel free to check out our related video. To begin, we'll click List a Space in the top right corner. All spaces on COPA are furnished. To ensure that your space that you're listing is furnished, we'll click, I confirm this space is furnished. We'll begin by adding the address. Next, we'll choose the type of property. Here, we'll choose whether we're the property manager, subletting the space, whether we own it, or perhaps we own it and live there. Here, we'll choose how we want to rent the space. As you can see, renting by bed means that renters can book the individual bed, whereas renting by the entire space requires renters to book all of the beds in the space and form a group on COPA to book that space. I'm going to rent mine by the entire space. Here we'll choose the number of bedrooms in the entire space and how many of those we're renting. In most cases, these will be the same, but sometimes if you're subletting, there will only be one bedroom out of the three, for example, that are rented. Here we'll choose the type of bed in this first bedroom. These details give renters a good idea as to where they'll be staying. If the bedroom is a converted room, I can select this checkbox here. If the bedroom has a private bathroom or an ensuite bathroom, I can check this box here. I'll check that box for bedroom B since it has a private bathroom. If any of the bedrooms have more than one bed, I can choose that here. For example, I may have a bunk bed that has two beds in it. Here we'll choose the number of bathrooms in the entire space. This includes the number of private or ensuite bathrooms. Next, we'll click Continue. As you can see, we're now on the second step of the listing edit process. We finished the basics, and now we're entering the cost. If my prices change throughout the year, I can select seasonal pricing. With seasonal pricing selected, I can choose a different price for the entire space for each different month of the year. In my case, I'll keep it simple with just my one monthly price. Here, we'll specify the price of each bed in the entire space. Even though renters will book the entire space and I'll receive 3,000 total each month, this helps renters get an idea as to what the price of each bedroom should be. Since, as a host, I have a better idea as to how they, these are priced. For example, bedroom A has a queen bed, but no ensuite bathroom. So I could say it's 800. Bedroom B, for example, does have an ensuite bathroom. So I could bump it up a bit more. Since bedroom C has bunk beds, it makes sense to make them less expensive than the bedrooms with single beds in them. So I'll choose the remaining amount split evenly. Here you can see the total left to assign is zero. Since I have evenly split the 3000 amongst the four beds. Next, I can choose whether or not I'd like to prorate the listing. 
As you can see, if prorating is on, this will give tenants a discounted rate for any partial months that they stay. If prorating is off, they will always have to pay the entire month's rent. I'll leave prorating on. Here, I'll choose the rental deposit that I'd like to receive to secure a tenant. Each tenant has to pay this rental deposit before moving in. All that I require for my rental deposit is a security deposit. I'll set mine at $600 so that it's not a barrier to entry for the renter, but it's enough that I can feel safe and know that I have insurance. If you have any one-time cleaning fees to add, feel free to enter that here. Next, we'll move on to the Availability tab. As you can see, this is the third step in the process. Here we can choose our availability settings, including adding a calendar from another platform. If I list this space on another website, it's best to import that calendar into this listing. Then the availability on that calendar will stay updated on both platforms and I don't have to update each manually. It's important to note that upon importing the calendar from the other platform, I also need to export this calendar to that platform as well. Since my space won't be available until May, I'll create a block on my calendar. I'll specify that the current tenant is staying there until the end of April. Once I've created the block, you can see those dates are blocked off on my calendar. If I ever want to edit that block, I can just click it and then click edit or delete it if I wanted to. Since my space is available the rest of the months after May, I'll leave this open. Next, we'll move on to the details step. Here, we'll start with amenities. It's important to note that all COPA homes must include furniture, bedding, towels, cookware, and tableware. This way, renters can move straight into the space without having to buy extra things first. Since I know the speed of the Wi-Fi, I'll make sure to include that. This is especially helpful for renters because they have a good idea as to what situation they'll get into. After choosing the rest of the amenities, I'll then choose where is the laundry. In this case, it's in the same unit. I'll allow cats and dogs, but not other pets. To make payments easier, I'll include all the utilities in the rent. If you currently don't include utilities, it can be easiest to bump up the price slightly to cover them and then check them off here. This apartment building is wheelchair accessible. The apartment has paid street parking, which I'll select here. For my house rules, I'll specify that there's no smoking inside and that I'd like quiet hours between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Here, I'll include the guidelines for when my renters move in. These are helpful because it saves me from having to email or message the renters beforehand. Instead, they can see these details right on COPA.
I can not only choose the Wi-Fi, but I can also specify what day is garbage and add any additional private notes. For example, if it's a home with a garden or lawn, I can specify that they don't need to worry about watering that. Next, I'll add photos. To add photos, I'll click here to upload them. I'll choose the photos from my computer. For this example, I'll keep the photos at a minimum. Ideally, I'll have a photo of every room and all of the details renters would want to see. After clicking Add, these photos will then appear in the listing edit. Next, I'll specify what room each of these photos are. The reason that this is required is because it gives renters a much better idea as to where they'll be living. For example, the two bedrooms that I have in the space are quite similar, and it could be hard for a renter to know which one is bedroom A and which one is bedroom B. To create an ideal listing, I'll also upload a video tour. To upload a video, I can simply record a walkthrough of my space and upload it to YouTube. Then I can paste that YouTube link here. Upon uploading it to YouTube, I can make sure to specify that the video is unlisted so that no one can see it except people on my COPA listing. Alternatively, especially for larger property management companies, I can also upload a Matterport tour, which is 3D. Now that I've uploaded my photos and selected the rooms for each, I'll click continue. Here, I'll be taken to the title and description, approaching the final steps of the listing creation process. Here, I'll specify a title for my listing. Try to make the title fun and unique to your listing. The same goes for your description. This is a chance to show your personality and enable the renter to get to know you and the space. For this example, I'll keep it simple. However, I recommend adding details that aren't included in the rest of the listing. Here, I'll add my bank account so that I can receive the rental deposit and monthly rent through COPA. Additionally, if I'm managing this property for someone else and taking a percentage of that monthly rent for my services, I can choose split payouts and add a second bank account for the payments to go to. With this second bank account, I can specify the percent that I take for managing that property. I'll skip this detail for now. If 
Finally, I'll be able to publish my listing after uploading my government issued ID. That's it for creating a listing on COPA. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at copa.co. Alternatively, feel free to check out the rest of our videos.